Ah. I understand you're doing some good work on that political website you got. <clears throat> I don't know. Well? I have my views. Oh, well, I, I heard that you guys are uh, designing how to help Islam have a cultural revolution such as the Renaissance occurred in Europe that broke the back of the Catholic, <coughs> the Catholic Church. So they need a philosophical re-examination of their own basis in order to find a basis for a dramatic shift from Islam to a Renaissance. And how are you planning on it? I think that was your idea. No, 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 no. <laughs> Though I like that it. That was your idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. See that? No, uh, I didn't actually. I let it go by too quickly. Oh. He has a website and he's dealing with the problem. He has a Facebook group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Of how to help produce an Islamic renaissance, such on the model of European renaissance. Mm since the European Renaissance broke the back of the Catholic Church, so parallel we would expect a Renaissance in Islam to break the back of the feudalism and terrorism as an expression of Islam. Agree? That's what he's designing. All right, Ingmar. Good for you. I need your website. And that's why, that's why he's interested in as getting together, you know, as much as he can people who understand what is it that brought about the Renaissance. Because unless he understands that, it's likely he's not going to be able to help the Islam come around for such a parallel movement unless he understands his own. Is that right? That's right. Uh, did you agree go along with Barbara? Oh. But I wouldn't know where to look. That's, you don't have to. Well, I suppose Google. But... You, yeah, you can... Uh, Get people to get in there. Right? <coughs> so the question is, what, br what brought about the Renaissance? I believe that was the question. Yes, that's what Barbara was said. Was there two Renaissances? The, ones that, the one that we usually know as the Renaissance in Italy, and there's an Islamic, Islamic Renaissance. There was, is, or will be? Uh, what was? They did have a renaissance. Huh. What broke it? I don't know. Oh. <sighs> you mean they had a counter-reformation just like what happened in Europe? Oh, right. Oh. They did? I didn't know that. Well, if they did, you're going to have to look at two things, not just one now. Hmm. What is the renaissance and what is the counter-reformation? I think he's got a good subject. Good subject. John? What do you think? I think I would enjoy reading that web page. Yeah. It might be anonymous, but I think I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Hmm. Would you recommend any reading on that matter? You don't need to. I, no, no, you give the problem to the people. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> you don't need answers. You can probably get trolls to work. Yeah, and say, hey, this is our, this is our goal, right? I mean, they're all true believers on both sides. Right, the Catholic Church just was monstrous to its people as the Islamic faith is monstrous to its people. Oh. So... I don't even, I'm not even clear about the history. So a, uh, the, uh, he, a renaissance look, look, in yeah, Islam uh, uh, Ask any of these people the about history and ask them about the these Church. two ideas and they'll flood you with information. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows. Is that right? Or, well, well, there are those two possibilities. No, they disagree. No? <laughs> David? What is this? Heresy? <laughs> May, then wait a minute. You mean it's possible that we may have lived through something that we don't understand? It's looking that way. Does this mean that with this tool I could uh, convert an American conservative? Break the back of 
American conservatism? Because I might, Absolutely. I might want to start there yes, yes. as an easier task than the Muslims. Oh. I'm not sure. I'm trying to no, no, it. there's no difference. Is that possible? There's no difference between, between cons Christian conservatism and Islamic conservatism. They're literal literalists on both sides, are they not? But they, uh, the Muslims appear to be more violent, more wilf willing to be violent. How you doing? Yeah, just like the conservatives. Well, I mean, how many, how many? Planned Parenthood clinics that they burned down, killed how many doctors? And well, the other day they killed three people and injured a few others. But San Bernardino they got 14, and in Paris they got 100 and whatever. They, hey, these conservatives will do the same thing. They'll get onto machine guns. They, they have them at home. Hey. They're getting, right, they're getting ready to kill one another. They just have to upgrade their, instead of <coughs> snipers, they'll get, they'll get, you know, the best, the vest with the dynamite, they'll do the same thing. Wow. Pierre, Pierre's point was that they're just they're just as bad the American conservatives no, not and just the Islamic. As bad. They're yes. the just same. As, they're the, the same. same. The same mindset. Yeah. Same, same mindset. mindset. Yeah. He has this website that he's going to use for a very noble purpose. Good. I'm glad somebody is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Regina on it. She just came in. She wants to know. How are you going to use the website? Go ahead, tell it. Uh, we want to transform uh, Islam <laughs> and uh, it, in the mode of. Uh, That's what they're having a problem with. The Islamic Renaissance in the past, breaking the back of the Catholic Church in Spain, was it? Is that is that where the? That's somewhere. That's somewhere. Right. We still we need experts in history to help us out. But aren't they all children of Abraham? The uh, the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christian? I've heard that. And Zoroaster, I've also heard that. So what are you going to do with that? What are you do with that? Well, they're all, they're all bloodthirsty. They all are all children of Abraham, and they all kind of have that same um, dogma. I think that's all. I'm not sure about that. We, we, we have liberal Christians and liberal Muslims, right? It's the yeah. conservatives that are yeah. the problem. Yeah, but you see, uh, Rhonda's raising a more fundamental question. Yeah, they're all killers. They are. She's saying the hell with whether or not they're conservative or liberal. They're coming out of the same madness mm -hmm. that started with Abraham. <laughs> yeah. Right? They all want war. Yeah, does it make any difference whether you're killed by an Orthodox Jew, Islamic, or Christian Zionist, or fundamentalist? No, you're just yeah. you're killed just the same way. In the same way, for the same God. <laughs> the same God. They're all going after the same God. <laughs> Isn't that a guess? Yeah, but this is uh, this is my problem. Like I, I speak with these conservatives, Republicans online, and. Uh, you know, they call Obama a traitor, and they call uh, Obama voters stupid ass, and I mean, how do you, I, I don't, whatever renaissance, how do you convert a person like that? They're stupid. They're, they're not interested in changing their mind. We're not, look here. Maybe that's the first You know, if you get, if you get, if you get a person like them in the time of uh, Ficino, uh, you know, Ficino's brilliant, he's great. Is he going to convert people like that, though? I don't know. I don't see it. <laughs> see, you hit upon a point. You're saying <coughs> it, it, it might be that 
the movement has to start within their people who have grasped a higher principle. Yeah. Or you could start over and say, hey, you know what? We're dealing just with states of mind. And uh, there's a certain state of mind that shows itself up that's loyalists among these Abrahamic religions. And look at the, the cost where we have to pay for it. It's time to re-examine the fundamental belief of the Abrahamic religion, such as Rhonda is saying. Yeah. Yeah, you don't... Right? However, however, there are among those sects, the more... Um, I met the, I had a client one time, and he called himself a, a thinking Christian, <coughs> right? And they, they're not dogmatic. They're, they're, they're like uh, Bill Moyer. If you get somebody like Bill Moyer, and they're more liberal Christians, so I don't know See, the, the, hmm. But the crisis is anytime there's a social crisis, there's no room for the liberals yeah. in any of those three camps. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Well, and they know that. And in fact, they're seen as heretics. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. I don't know. I mean, you know, given this, this attack in San Bernardino, right, you got various members of the family of the people involved in the attack coming out and talking, and it. I don't see any <coughs> impulse, or the Council on American Islamic Relations, I don't see any impulse to talk about the ideological roots. Rather, they're trying to protect but you can do protect it. their own people from backlash. But you can. Uh, I can do it, but who's going to listen? What? Who's going to listen? Who cares who's going to listen? If two people <laughs> of meaning who, who can do something with your ideas, That's true. That's, true. that's all you need. Right, like, like, like these American Muslims that are not radical should have that conversation. They should say, hey, you know, they, in fact, what they're saying is that these radicals are not Muslims. That that they that they don't define the religion. But I think it's more true that hey, yes, they are. They're conservative Muslims, so they're not even dealing with the truth. Yeah, but. Rhonda's raising the question, why stop with the word Islam? Is Because they themselves have the common roots with both Christianity and Judaism. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about all three. Right, absolutely. See, he said, absolutely, so that's going to that's gonna have an impact on his website. I mean, I've made posts like that before, you know. And, and? I'm interested in them, but <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, hey, it doesn't matter. All you're listening, all you want to do is influence two people. Hmm. The hell with the masses. <laughs> the masses are the problem. No, though. they're not, because they'll follow their own leaders. They don't know how to reason. They imitate. <coughs> do you think that's true or universal? <laughs> Are you su suggesting even it goes at one's home, that we tend to imitate our fathers and mothers, our first teachers? Oh, that's strange. You have such a strange view. I hang out with strange people. No. <laughs> like Barbara? <laughs> yes. I, know, I always suspected she was strange. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's but would it not be worthwhile to start a discussion on your website of, of what what are the, what would have to be in place to start a renaissance among the Islamic as well as the Jews? And the Catholics. Well, sure. well, the, what Cath like Cath whatever. I don't Is think they can have a renaissance. Cath what? Whatever. Catholics? Catholics. I think that it just, oh, are they I Christians? Think, I think it would be, um, yeah, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> their, their goal is to just wipe out Renaissance. Well, and they kill their own. Like, Isaac Rabin was a man of peace in Israel. He was the one that was going to be doing the peace process. Well, one of their own killed him. And there was a fellow a Muslim in um, Little Arabia in Anaheim. His name was Alex Oday. And he was a great. 
great community activist and a, and a more peaceful Muslim, and they're, they're the Muslim Shari, Shari, so they're only kill, kill the ones who are liberal. Then why don't you make it as if we're, what we're facing really is a war between different classes of states of mind? Hmm? Then you can, because it looks like what we're looking for, uh, looks like maybe we need a renaissance in respect to states of mind. Yeah, that would be good. Hmm. What would that be? Go ahead, speculate. Well, we'll all be killed anyway. What, what? I said that we'll all be killed, <laughs> given the principle that is going around. We raise another Renaissance idea, like this guy, Rabin. Rabin. Ode. Ode. Rabin. Yes. Rabin. Yeah. yeah. Would be killed. Yeah. Or well, go, how about Gandhi? Gandhi yeah. was killed by one of his own, too. How about JFK? Yeah. Well. JFK was killed by someone else. John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we need a, a new Renaissance that is, takes on states of mind as the basis for? the need for a change? Is There's right? one happening. What? There's one happening. Well, there's certainly well, a change. But wait a minute. And it's ignored. Wait, wait a minute. What, what, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just don't want to publicize it. <laughs> you, 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 you don't you can, I don't. <laughs> well, fears have sex. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I like living a little longer so I can wake up more. You like to what? I'd like to live a little longer so I can wake up a little more. <laughs> That's not a good. <coughs> that's not a good philosopher. Okay, you don't like it. But well, the biggest problem it. is knowing. You know, people have this problem. Of not it's hard to be a not knower in a society, and that helps a lot if you want to look at things and see what's going on. You have to admit that you're ignorant. That's what you have a problem, which means you don't. Know. You know, I, I I saw something in respect to the twin, the, this couple. It woke me up. That two things. One is that we went into. Uh, Saddam Hussein when he went in, wanted to go into Kuwait. What? Saddam Hussein wanted to go into <coughs> Kuwait. Right. And I thought, wait a minute, that's a direct access to the Gulf. That's what he wants. He wants his land back. Well, that would be in competition with Saudi. Complete, because they have more oil. And it occurred to me, wait a minute, are we functioning like soldiers, militia for the Saudis? That was one question I had. The second one was that we go into Iraq, we go into Afghanistan, we go into Syria, we go into Libya. These people do not have weapons of mass destruction. If Russia came over and bombed us and said, oh, well, we're doing this for your own good, and by the way, we did not have weapons of dis mass discussion, destruction to fight back, what the heck would we do? I mean, like, we have a shock and awe treatment and now they're returning the shock and awe. And I'm going, this is like Nori going into Panama. We go into these weaker countries, we bomb them to smithereens, and then we get pissed off when they start fighting back. They're supposed to submit, aren't they? I, anyway, that's my thinking, and it just ticked me off that there were two things that I hadn't seen before. I didn't realize this country, these countries were really not dangerous. On, on one level, that is, that they were not, they did not have weapons of mass destruction. And well, therefore, what are That country are thing, doing? I don't think that country thing is completely valid because we pulled out of Iraq in 2011 and that didn't stop ISIS from starting to chop off the heads of American journalists. They, yeah, they want war with us. Well, Irrespective of how we function with them, if we pull out, I, they're not satisfied. They I, want to keep going. I, I'm not disagreeing. There's an ideological issue. Yeah, I, right. I was just thinking on the, on the just the human level or the just the logic logistics of us being uh, I mean, okay. bombing families and cities. And although it, Iraq wasn't the you know the guy was brutal against people, there was some he civilization. I mean, going. No, no, yeah, I mean, that, that, that invasion was so the t most horrible thing to happen in families, decades. Their families, their lives are being bombed to smithereens. Syria is just being bombed. 
artifacts are being exploded. There was a great article in the latest I'm nation going. or New York or which one it is that they talk about the fact that even this thing we just had happen, this plays right into the ISIS people because they're not a unit that you go bomb. You bomb a bunch yeah. of people there and it's a it's a belief system based upon economic insecurity. The first start was the drought in Syria several years ago. Millions of people moved to the city because there's no money um, growing wheat. And so they came to the city and then they had nothing there and first you have a whole bunch of people who have nothing for anything and they see us all being successful and everything else, they don't have crap. So they've got to join somebody who gives them hope and that's what ISIS is. And if there's no hope yeah. left, they'll do a suicide bomb. And, and I'm thinking that if it was happening over here with all the most of the, the even liberals result, or many would result to their religion to defend themselves. But anyway, that was my thinking. I just read not to get away from the ideological aspect. I just read the story of Abraham. Hmm. And he says, go out, find a new land, and I will bless everybody that blesses you in this new land, mm -hmm. and curse anybody that curses you. So first of all, it's a national of conquest and, and um, uh, settling of people. And then the second thing he does, which he we're says, doing. if you trust me, you'll kill anybody, even your own son. Mm -hmm. So those are two premises that you have to look at. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to kill anybody, even your own son, or anybody, for any, any spiritual reason? Oh. And two, to have God curse anyone for you for not believing or supporting you in your nationalism. I mean, that, that's fundamental to all yep. three of those religions. Yep. And the premise is it's okay to kill and it's okay to separate off and divide nations. And dividing nations and the right to kill are the premise of the Abraham story. So if you want to go to Ingmar, if you want to make a, a header on your website, it would be, there is no division of nations and there's no justification for killing. Now let's talk. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Th those are the sons of Abraham. That's right. And that would just, and that would reflect on us as well. And and all the whole conversation that we have about everything all divided up and who's fighting for who and what, what, what. Yep. So I mean that's that's kind of a buzzkill in a way because we're having so much time talking politics. But that seems oh, that so. seems that seems to be the premise of Abraham, the story of Abraham. <laughs> the way politics is these days is a buzzkill. I try. We're unsure yeah. if we can even keep Trump out of the White House. Oh, Politics is so. Yeah, I have a, a, ne a grand nephew named Isaac, and his his brother is named Sammy. But I just realized it should have been named Ishmael because that was the illegitimate brother of Isaac. And those two have been at each other through since like day one. Just in, that's another story. That's Sorry. Amazing. It has nothing to do with what I just said. So, Pierre, when you Maybe the say is that away. there is a premise that needs to be addressed, because there's a common psychology to all three, you could go to this book, or you could do something else. What, would, what else would you do to say there's a common psychology to um, uh, nationalist terrorism? And that would be right wing uh, uh, Republican American Tea Party uh, uh, Texas Waco everything all the way out to um, the furthest reaches of Somalia I think it would be uh, an intermediary step to be able to show that the various forms of the Abrahamic religions share a common psychology Once that's set in place, 
then you can step back and say then to try to deal with any one of them and their injustices misses the point that there's a certain type of person that is attracted to that and will defend it, but even at the rate of killing you in order to defend it. That the real problem is the state of mind, that commonness between the three of them. Then, what, see, how is it that the Catholic Church, most powerful body of men, lost their power? in the Renaissance. Like, see, because if what we're saying is correct, then you need a Renaissance against this state of mind that's common among all of these three forms. See, our Renaissance was only in respect to one of those churches, Catholics, Christian, right? What would it be like then to try to bring about a transformation, revolution, renaissance for all three of them? By the way, uh, does that mean we have to rethink and try to say maybe the real problem we're facing is that the divisions in states of mind are so, so severe that they are like different levels of being? Huh. then we need to study the levels of being in which men can be distributed and find out where this pernicious group, where they come from, what maintains them, and try to ad address that. This is why he's going to do it with his website. <laughs> That's great. Hey, right, Rhonda? That's what he ordered. <clears throat> yeah, because he's got a website on political essence, the very essence of politics. Should it not be states of mind that becomes the subject of political consciousness? Oh, okay. See, he's going for it. So let's encourage him. Huzzah, huzzah. Huzzah, go for it, go for it. And Regina might say, if they shoot you, we'll, we'll, we'll wave to you as you go. What flag you want us to wave after you? Yeah, yeah. They shoot me, what shoot me? I will say, there goes, there goes another noble soul. Right? And we can always say, well, Steve will pick it up. He'll pick it up. So your demise, do you think it's about ready to happen? If you do what, go forward with this idea? Mm. I, I don't know. I work two jobs. And you have two I'm, jobs? I'm more of a blogger. <laughs> you, <know>. <laughs> <laughs> if you wait for readiness, you will never get ready. So. Well, well, sure no, no, but it, is it conceivable that this analogy is possible? Which is, just as the Renaissance broke the back of the Catholic Church, is it possible that a Renaissance in a parallel way could break the back of the Islamic as well as the Jewish? Or step back from it, should there be a new kind of Renaissance that challenges all three simultaneously? And if so, we need someone who has some kind of skill for doing research to discover this. Who, who do you think has uh, access to the computer? Um, oh, Robin. 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 Okay. We can give him the job. Good idea. You're up. You're up. Revolution. Revolution. Yeah. Right? Whether, how to design a renaissance that would deal with different types of mankind that are exhibited in various religions that we can identify. See, he doesn't believe it. Are you it. a terrorist? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you need to call that it, uh, that you would be willing to uh, eliminate any traitor to that vision? Would you be willing to eliminate your own son? Would you be willing, and, and then... And How about if, kill innocent said, people? That too. Uh, and, and killing innocent people, collateral damage? <coughs> 
No, not <laughs> collateral damage. Targeting innocent people. Um, and who? Targeting innocent people? Yeah, like they did in Paris. Like they well, did in no, because I don't think they're San Bernardino. targeting innocent people. What do you mean? They're targeting people who are part of a nation that is cursed by God for not defending their nation. Right. And these are people who are enjoying the benefits of a nation that has uh, attacked their nation. And anybody who is that is complicit. And the enemy. I can see why terrorists would go into any room and start shooting it up. If uh, you pay your taxes and you live in that country, you are the enemy. Mm -hmm. I think. I think that's what justifies. They're, they're not innocent. They're, they're, they're. West, the West. Not, it's Civilized not even the West. Here. They're um, uh, uniform members of the opposition. Okay. Uniform members of the opposition. They don't have guns. Well, the people being killed don't have guns. Yeah, they're not they're sh actively shooting at the yeah. people that are shooting at them. Uh, God, God would curse them, even if they didn't have guns. <coughs> but let's go back. God didn't say anything about guns. He just said, if you don't support me, you are the enemy. I will curse you. Now, the, the, there, there's, a, the, there's a news item that came out yesterday that said that Remington, the greatest manufacturer of military weapons, has had a phenomenal increase in sales mm -hmm. in America, right? So everybody is arming for the war. The war. Okay. Rubio just said, "We are at war." <laughs> we are at war. <laughs> what did he say? Right? We're obviously well, at war. So then, wait a minute. According to your very well thought out questionnaire that you might use, <laughs> I, I would add one last line. <clears throat> Is it possible to survive without becoming philosophical? <laughs> no. Hmm. Hmm. Well, no. Renaissance can't come out of a kind of a revival of thought, Greek thought when they <coughs> this Renaissance, that rebirth that came out of the. Uh, Is that right? To go along with that? Yeah, like Platon. Then you do know about these things. You've been hiding your knowledge. Well, Notice how quick he went for Platon. Mm. Very quick. Well, it's caused by the fall of Constantinople in 1453. There was an activating event. It just didn't come out of nowhere. A minor consequence in the great scheme of things. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe we need something like that. Maybe if you, mean, you have to wait for some historical condition first? Well, maybe we can push it a bit. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, like maybe global warming is going to cause mm. something. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. At least when New York is underwater. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. What is the state of mind of this worker class that believes its own mythology? I think David just described yeah, it. Yeah. The answer yeah. As a class of people, but I don't. Yes, I'm not it, seeing the state of mind. I'm seeing my deficit. That's why I was hoping. Yeah, it needs. Yes, it needs a, a unity so that we can see the type of person that that questionnaire would develop and identify. Yeah, quite right. I just kind of thought you all had that yeah. ready. Yeah. But he, but he no, did. No. But he did okay. talk about yeah. Abraham. You did bring yeah. out. That would justify why we went into Kuwait, uh, into Iraq. With, you know, we well, were, it would just, that's okay. It's a, it, it, the other way of taking the question, if you were philosophical, how would that change the problem of nationality, of statehood identity, of the idea of a defensible position that would justify killing? Um, yeah, so the last question on that questionnaire is a tough one. Mm -hmm. oh, we got big problems. I got big problems? <laughs> we got big problems. Why? Well, for decades mm -hmm. we've been supporting Saudi Arabia for their oil. 
Well, and the and the most virulent form of Islam comes right out of that place. Well, we'll stop. <coughs> If it, if it means continuing this madness, then we'll stop. We won't stop. Matter of fact, oil is already uh, on, on the inconsequential list because new breakthroughs are finding alternatives to oil. There are plenty of them. They're well known. E even using... Uh, Elements of the of the oceans uh, can be transformed into oil hmm. or substitutes of oil. But okay. Uh, yeah, I hope that goes in a good direction. See, but, 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 suppose you read, suppose you restate the problem in, in other terms. Uh, we're heading for a disaster. We all know it. Um, will we have to go through it in order to, out of the debris, find some new rational form that's going to avoid everything that we just went through? And what form will that take? <coughs> like, is it likely that this we're heading towards a bloodbath? People are arming themselves. They, they expect a bloodbath. Even among themselves, they're going to shoot one another. There was a graph in the paper, I think it was today or yesterday, and it showed a graph of the, um, the mass killings in yeah. the United States since 2011. Right. No, it's exponential. 9-11. Since 9-11, yeah. And it's just exponential. More than one day this year. Mass killings in the United States. Well, I'll tell you what, if there was a mass shooter around me, I'd rather have a gun than not. Join that's, the the same, that's the same bullshit the NRA puts for it. Well, I'm just saying. Are you going to have your gun ready all the time? On your, I just hope I take Parmenides with me. I, <laughs> 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 I have anything. What was that? Well, I just hope I have Parmenides with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to shoot me. Let me just read this last line here. <laughs> yeah. well, the reasoning is very interesting of it because this morning there's a paper that says, uh, a letter that says, uh, when have you heard an NRA uh, member ever do one of these massacres? That's why we don't need guns. They're all NRA. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they really. <laughs> no, but, they have to you show know. their card. Yeah, 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 sure they do. Yeah. You know, over over ten ten times the number of casualties in this in America through ki the killings, the vis a vis our weapons, so-called accidental killings, far are far greater number than any terrorists. <coughs> if we were to raise, you know, raise the question, what is the total number of casualties? Uh, due, the, due to terrorism, and then alongside of it have, what is the total number of casualties in the United States when people shoot one another either accidentally or intens uh, in intentionally? You'll find that the one is far greater than the other, but no one worries about it. Why do you give everybody a gun? You know, this woman is alone in her house, and she's got a gun, and she hears some noise outside, so she kills her neighbor when he's doing something with his trash can. I mean, that's side is if somebody's coming into your house with a gun, where do you keep your gun that you can grab it real quick like and get it on you? Carry it around on your hip or what? Or is it in a drawer that you can't quite get to before they shoot you or whoever it is? And so it's totally irrational that there's going to be guarding your health. It's just That's why I had one. I had a 357 Magnum. And 357 Magnum? I did, yeah. Woo! I took my dad because my dad got that gun on my birthday. I said he didn't have enough money to buy me a pair of gym socks. So when he died, I said, that gun comes to me. Yeah, right. And I took it. And I, But that was the problem. You know, Did you ever fire I it? Had the gun in, no. <laughs> I had the gun in one corner of the house and the uh, bullets in, on the second floor in another corner of the house. And even so, Wesley once said to me, he said, where is that gun anyway? Implication being he'd been looking for it. 
Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. And that and the fact that I kept thinking like you. It's like, okay, now I decided What's there's somebody it? coming in the house. Okay, now where have I got the gun? Okay, it's over there. Okay, now where have I got the bullets? Okay, they're over there. Okay, now, and that kind of bun, gun is what my brother calls a boom flop gun. Because it's so nasty that if you shoot somebody with it, the person that you shoot dies. It goes through the wall, through the next apartment wall, and kills somebody in the next apartment or house. They're very nasty. They're like elephant guns. I mean, they're... They are yeah. elephant guns. So, I don't know what my dad wanted with it. That's kind of a bafflement. But it looked like a... It, looked, it was a pistol like you see in the old westerns. Yeah. And it was stainless steel. You know, so it looked exactly like that kind of gun. It's like, really? So finally I said to my brother, I said, you may take this gun back, I'm not going to take it. And the other thing was, then I found these bullets that my uncle had given me, which were a lower load, they were like 30 something else, 38 maybe, special. that you could use in the gun that would lower the, both two things, the killing power and the kick, right? Mm -hmm. So, because I have fired guns, I just didn't fire that gun. And so, but I said to myself, so I took them to the, police station and they said and they have this sign outside saying do not bring any guns or ammunition into the police department goes to me goes to mesa so i walked back to my car put them on the front seat of my car walked in and they said oh you wanted to bring those in no problem so i brought the bullets in and gave them to her and she said these are so old that they're very um yeah. unstable unstable so i was glad to get rid of them i didn't mention to her that my brother probably had enough instability in his <laughs> oh. <laughs> He has a big gun safe and everything. A huge gun safe. I mean, brother. you know, there's a lot I don't understand about Obama's vision of how gun control will help, but legislating against drugs has not solved the problem of drug addiction and drug availability. Why do you think legislating against guns will somehow keep guns out of the people's hands that we don't want the guns Australia, to be in? Australia has a model. They were, they were able to solve their problem somehow. Oh, look at the countries where that have such restrictions and take a look at whether or not that has made any difference. Uh, England. I've heard England, yeah. They have it's some problems there, largely because the criminals can still get guns, but not on the way, not to the numbers that we have it here. Yeah. You know? And that's the problem. The problem isn't like having a pistol. The problem is having an AK-47 that will kill 100 people in that's 10 right. seconds. You know, and the, apparently the change, you buy one of these AK-40 seconds that's not modified <coughs> for rapid fire, and the, the fix to make it modified for rapid fire is apparently easy and available on the web in, like, hundreds of different places. It's like $2.50. Yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing, nothing to convert a gun back to a rapid fire gun. So, so the, for me, that's where it's really at. It's that <coughs> why do we have to, you know, the, the hunters say, well, we need these rapid-fire guns, really? <laughs> 47s or whatever, Kalashnikovs, you need those to kill what? Hey, when you, when you want to shoot a rabbit, you need rapid-fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> rabbit. Rabbit. Rabbit so funny. Oh, you know, Michael Moore did that movie. Uh, Blow him off the wood. Didn't he? Uh, uh, the guns Fahrenheit. 9-11, yeah. Well, go ahead. You were making a point. And he, and he was looking at other countries who have, you know, the guns, the guns that we have too, but they don't, they don't have the mass killings that we do. So you know, we're going back to what is, what's that well. state of mind? This is how come they have as many weapons as private people as we can have, but yet they don't have the mass killings that we have here. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, like England doesn't have rednecks, do they? Uh, there's some variety thereof, I think. Yeah, they're everywhere. Well, <laughs> they just don't call them rednecks. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have a Muslim population too. Some of but them I've heard too that the problem with ISIS is that they're, you know, they're invading other countries where their particular brand of Muslim is not the same brand as the people of the country, <coughs> and they don't care. They're saying you're right, you're wrong. You'll follow our principles. You'll give your young underage daughters to our guys. They can all marry them. We can go into any house. They have like women police who'll go into any house and find out <coughs> where the unmarried women are and carry them away. And, and apparently it has to do with even the way you walk. They said, they, the women say, these, these um, women Muslim police from the ISIS group, they watch the way a woman walks in the street. 
And just like you used to make the point that um, Solzhenitsyn says that people could get arrested in Russia and sent to the gulag for having a noble way of walking. And these women are saying they can get arrested on the street and punished for with lashes. Yeah. With lashes for doing things that are regarded as bad by this particular ISIS sect of Muslims. They're called morality police. Yeah. yeah. Plus, they're just setting in their, in, into place their own idea. And it reminds me of my brother. One time I went somewhere with my brother, and he had two, not one, but two brand new New Testaments leather-bound on his dashboard. Now, I could understand someone having one, but two. So I said, what's with this? And he said that his friend had this, had created, he didn't tell me that. So when I started laughing at him, then, he, then he's like, wait, that was my friend I was talking about. He didn't tell me that. But it was a guy who apparently had his own idea of what constituted Christianity. Anybody who did anything else wasn't a Christian. The guy had like 20 rules or something. You know, all those nutcases who have, a, sometimes they have 10,000 people in their church and they have their own prescri prescription as to what constitutes Christianity. And they, apparently that yeah, ISIS is the same thing. Well, they got so it's yeah. not only the religion, or it is, as you were saying, not the religion, it's the fundamentalist crazy people. Yeah, they got uh, different forms of Lutheranism ri rival with each other on, yeah, based upon the same Lutheran. idea because you don't accept the same set of views. I'm a Lutheran. Uh oh. Baptist, I don't believe it. I was a Lutheran. Okay. There was a She'll divorce you. In my church, you could smoke, and you had Boy Scouts that weren't related to the church. and in that church, they couldn't have Boy Scouts because that wasn't following what they were doing. They had their own Lutheran Scouts, so to speak. They're yep. very, very controlled. And the Catholics. Right. And the Catholics, too. I mean, you know, I was in a Boy Scout. <coughs> not, uh, not these people. Well, my mother's church was like that. They Everything that in her upbringing from the time she was a child until she left for college was church-oriented. Church picnics, church dances, all all under the auspices of the church. They didn't do <coughs> anything that wasn't uh, connected to the church. No, no, that no. no, takes the place of the agora. Mm -hmm. Wow. Say, so, do, do, do you think the underlining principle behind all of this is a uh, war against reason, rationality? Sides. Yeah, and, and peace, yeah. peace and happiness and well, goodwill huh? amongst men. <laughs> I mean, thank goodness it doesn't happen in our culture because we're <laughs> all raised well, in families where everybody yeah, is, is has an openness towards <laughs> independence and rationality, and yeah. no one ever plays the role of restricting that, and not, the, not in our culture. If the premise is. <laughs> no, right? No, no, in our no? culture we do too. The chair too? Yeah, like I didn't understand why the Planned Parenthood bomb, why wouldn't, how come it took so long for me to hear any mention of the idea that the guy was a Christian terrorist in the media? They they held off on days with trying to figure out a motive for it. He's essentially <laughs> you. <coughs> yeah, well, Timothy McVeigh, he only yeah. blew up a federal right. building in Oklahoma. <coughs> and. They spent so much money to conceal the fact that he came out of a right-wing Christian group, and they didn't want to attribute his motive to that group. Otherwise, that group and that church would have been terrorist-oriented. We don't have terrorism in our country. No, we just have I mean individuals who blow up federal buildings. That church in New York that, <laughs> that killed their kids. What? No, but do you think there is a war <laughs> against uh, states of mind, Richard? I think so. Not in your family? No. Oh. No, and if they were, I would run away. I would not stay there. You did run away. Yeah, but I went back. Well, it's, it's a... Is that the issue? Is that the fundamental issue behind all of this? It's a real. It's really a war against rationality of the mind. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the 
states, then what would be the best question to start that war? Or to end it. Well, to end it, To yeah, win it for um, the good guys. I th thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, what, what is the fundamental question that creates the opposition? Is it any question which makes for reason to be an option to believe? Is it any question? Now, now that I've asked that, what is the question that will end all this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That one. Because I like that question better. <laughs> Win your survey. <laughs> well, coach, help out. Oh, I just thought that David's own question was the one he's looking for. What? Any question? No. <laughs> what, is the, what is the question that will end all this? No, that was your question. Oh. Or will surface it. That'll, yeah, that's right. What is the question that will surface the war on? What's the best question? And, and, and what is the question? Because if people are fighting a war against reason, they need to see it. They need to see it. They need to see it, and it needs to be eminent, and they need, but... Well, these two terrorists the other day risky, had a six-month-year-old baby. It's a risky job going around asking that question. You've got to be quick on your feet. Oh, but he can do it on the web, David. Okay, yeah. That's right. <laughs> We're lucky we have such a colleague. That's right, yeah. There's no tough thing where he lives. He's web savvy. I think they'll have to be blood everywhere in a total crisis. Oh I do. Okay, so it, it has to be the result of a historical trend. <coughs> I don't know anything about history, but I, I don't think these people will be open to reflection until there's just Justice. disaster. Why Seems would, like. Why would they be open then? Yeah, exactly. Every... The terrorists left a six-month-year-old baby to go to Allah or whatever. They embrace disaster. No, they, <coughs> they, they, they rush headlong it towards it. Leveled, and then you have a question. <coughs> necessity, you're looking at. Doesn't otherwise, mean I don't see how you break through to you know uh, that state of mind. Fundamentalism. Uh, is, is, is that the same question as? Uh, what does it take to break through your own pathologos? Yeah, a crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what well, does it take to see your own problem? Fundamentally, because there are different kinds of problems, but is there one at the bottom which is really that question against the mind itself? The thing that, that suddenly comes up is this if, you, if I can use this story that you once told me, it was a, it's a very, very beautiful story. Regina went before her, her father and a, a girlfriend at an evening dinner, and the woman had some difficulty grasping the nature of reason and understanding. So Regina, having had done beautiful work, as we all know, in Euclid, took the woman through the first hypothesis, the first proposition, and brought her to see each step to the final conclusion. And the woman was amazed that she could then see that she had the capacity for reasoning and understanding. And the father said, well, you couldn't have done that at home. Or no, when did you just, when did you learn that? Yeah, when did you just yeah. learn that? Yeah. Because no, and I, cause I had introduced that I had studied this long time ago. Yeah. What did that mean then? He couldn't see that it was rational. He couldn't see that, that you could never have learned that at home. That too, definitely not. Definitely see, there not it is, at home. isn't yeah. it? In a most beautiful story. Yeah. Not allowed. He yeah it, yeah isn't that true? He's yeah. saying that would not have been allowed in my home when you were. That's my true. daughter in no, my house. He said, you just learned that. <coughs> that was two ways you use just. You mean recently or that it doesn't matter because you learned it. Good point. Both. Well, I mean, like, it, it isn't valid because you learned that, just as you can learn anything. Right. And no, just, no, that it was immediate. I said I had learned it earlier. I was bringing something up right. earlier. And he said, no, you just learned that. 
How many, yeah, Bill, how many years? <coughs> Maybe about five, six years. Well, I'm not talking about time. I'm just wondering he's making a negative statement about it. It's not mm -hmm. that he doesn't learn it. Just oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> but you're saying that time. Well, I took it as time, yeah. Say, so what kind of role would would you say he had it to maintain order in the house then? To block that kind of knowing, understanding? Not allowed. Yeah, not allowed. Not allowed. My brother too. I mean, he had to go somewhere else. Or, yeah, he had he had friends he went to. He did my brother. The things he did with my brother were just as bad. No mind. What age? What age see? No mind. See. No, no mind. So if you take that right, if, if and showing that you want to learn. If if uh, if you take that globally, right? It's not no. allowed. No. But not allowing that is going to manifest destruction it seems like there's a possibility right that that uh, it will surface if it's going to eat itself right sure sure but well, I'm thinking surface. that surface. reason the question see at that point it would have been nice if instead of me backing away if I could have turned and seen my dad at that moment in time he was in a good place, and I could have said, "Dad, what? Why are you reacting like this? What's going on? What just happened?" If I could have done that, that would have turned then that state of mind he had, which was to damn it and damn his girlfriend from what she just saw, to a different level. Well, I wasn't in a place to do that, but that was possible. It's possible to do that. Well. What, to, what, and it wouldn't would have been say? violent. What would you have said? Well, I would have, at that moment, when he said, well, he got really angry, and I would have said, <laughs> I mean, he no, blew see, up. See, see, that's the issue. Yeah. What kind of question would surface his problem? Right. What if it were, hey, Dad, why are you at war against understanding? Yeah. No, it would, it would have to be personal. Just so I just turn, he, turn it personal. Yeah, because it would be, hey, uh, hey, Dad, what just happened? What what just happened to you? Because I was showing her this issue. What did you just go through? What did you just see I was doing? What do you think I was doing? Mm. Or, or maybe something. Do you find it curious that this bothers you? <laughs> well, well no, because see. that's that makes yeah. it on him. You have. I see it as you have to really get him to wonder about what just happened Maybe, Dad, what like it? you're not you're what not, just happened yeah what just happened you just blew up and it's and it's highly likely that he didn't want to blow up but he saw he did dad whatever i did you just diminished and banned from your world what was it i just did that you diminished That's and right. banned from your world okay you could put it that way it have to be, a, yeah. It have to be softer than just. Yeah. I like not, Gina's uh, approach. Just ask the question: What just happened? Or that. Well, what if we were to say the hell with so <laughs> being soft and being polite? Yeah. What would what kind of question yeah, would like immediately that. make him see? That's if, oh. we, if we keep to that. Yes. What were you going to say? I What's that, which is? What just happened? What did you just go through? It's not happening. It's just I, 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 I agree. I like that. That's because that just stops him. I mean, he has to at least. I suppose you were to say, I don't like smart asses. <laughs> well, no. That's good. That was the it's possible. Okay, but yeah, then you could follow it up. Yeah, how, again. What, what is it <coughs> allowed? What, did, what do you think I was smart assing smart about? Well, you could say, who did that to you? Who did that to you? Uh, well, that would be down that's, later. That's, that could be down later, yeah. but it seems like. Through, yeah, did someone do that to you? Yeah. Where'd that come from? Who did that to you? Yeah, that question is coming. Well, what about <laughs> yeah. what I did as a smart ass? Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> you see, we're no longer getting yet the. 
after the all the blood stops flowing, <laughs> and the few people who are still standing, um, you know, Hopefully they're us. cooling off their guns. Is anybody going to say, what just happened? Yeah, I would. Is, 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 there, is that the birth of reason? I don't know. I don't know, I would. Would that st- would that cause somebody to blow a hole in you? Yeah. See, I wouldn't want to be standing next to the guy who had the gun with the bullet still in it when I asked that question. Yeah, yeah right. I would. I'd be like. So but or hold, how about post World War II, this, where we ask you like the cartoony? Let's get back to the question. No, no. How do you but instead I of do the images? How do you maybe, pose that question? Maybe you're you're that angry you gave gave it up. Well, he's that angry that he gave up, and you are moving forward. True. So I don't know. Maybe that question. Or are you that angry that you gave up? He gave up. He probably can't get to the answer, but it seemed like he said, "You just learned that." Meaning, and and you might say, "Well, what makes you think that?" You know, that too. because it's like there's then you you have done what in your household such that you think this could never have occurred earlier? What do you do? What have you done? That too. Hmm. Anything to turn around and get him to see that it's his thinking that this is wrong. But was he doing some seeing himself about the geometry? Like, was he following it? Good question. He was watching me do this. Yeah, so I was thinking that might be another. Hey, didn't you just see what I did? Like, couldn't you do what I just did since you... Well, he never was able to, so he woke up to that. (laughs) He saw something that he never did himself. He had to He saw you do it with great style and precision, you see. And brought her to see something that he could never do for himself. Yeah, so He never saw that. in, in, In essence, he doesn't like that doesn't like that, no. Doesn't like understanding. Doesn't like going yeah. to a conclusion. Hmm. Well, the cultural uh, Well, that too. He doesn't right. like the steps. No, he doesn't want clarity in the steps. The clarity. And it follows and understanding, yes, and it concludes. Yeah. With clarity. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, and that's so to fundamental to that guy that you touched it just by doing that with some, not him, but he was an observer to see you do it. Right. So, so I, you know, obviously something in his own background, his own father, destroyed it in him. Had to have. What do you think? I, I'm going off on something else. Well, go I'm ahead. Might help. Historically, what historically, I mean, we have the Reformation where separate, you know, take the church out of state power. What else has happened historically when the blood, the religious bloodbaths, whether it's the crusade or whatever? See, the difficulty historically is that the Renaissance was based on a fiction. And once the fiction was known, the revolution ended. Some very insightful historians say the Renaissance only lasted 70 years. Renaissance assumed from people, especially Ficino, is that it was perfectly consistent to be both Christian and rational. They assumed what used to be called the the parallel role in history of sages and philosophers. They had twin, they they believed in a column, a column, two. On one side, Moses, the the prophets, right, all all the way line, according to historical periods, and alongside of it, parallel, they could put all of the Greek thinkers And on top of the list, they thought that uh, the primary Greek philosophers were parallel to Moses. 
or uh, Trismegetus that they assumed was parallel with Moses. They believed in this. No, they, this, this was the assumption that came out of the impact of Pseudo Dionysius's writings. And that was generally accepted as, as simply true. Then along came some scholar and he said, excuse me, that's a very interesting idea you have there, but uh, if you want to look at language and consider that you have to re-examine periods of time in terms of the development of language, you can't hold that view. There's no such thing as these, these thinkers lined up parallel. You've got to, got to re-examine them according to this premise. Uh-oh, what did that do to it? <laughs> then another dude came along and said, hey, uh, you know, this guy that's so important that was present at the crucifixion, uh, he was higher than, higher hierarchically, philosophically, metaphysically than Paul because this guy had Paul as a companion and out of his work, we developed a whole Catholic metaphysics. Turns out that that guy was a fiction. None of it could be established historically. So what did that do? That undermined the idea that you could join reason and Christianity intimately, and therefore that drive lost all its power. The Renaissance died. Counter-Reformation came and said, come on, let's get rid of Plato and all of this stuff that came along with it. That's, but that's, that's terrible. I mean, so their reason for rejecting that there can be a rational Christianity is based upon Myth. His, historical accuracy yeah. or the destruction of certain myths. That's right. Um, that's what happened. But that's ridiculous. Of course it's ridiculous. Which one? The thesis or the fact that it could happen? Um, well, you'd think that even if it's, even, even, even if someone fabricated that they were Dionysus at the time of Paul, there's still uh, a relevant impulse to have a rational Christianity. Like, because of, you know, the, well, and because of that there is good teachings in, in the Christian doctrine, right? Like Jesus' idea of love thy neighbor being the second commandment. I mean, that, that would explode all, all the problems that we're having right now. No, no longer with conservatives. It depends on whether or not you call, you call your neighbor your neighbor. Because in the New Testament, there's the story of the Samaritan woman who uh, uh, actually one-ups Jesus when she says, hey, you know, we need, uh, we'll take the the crumbs off your table to survive it with our children. He says, oh yeah, oh God, you got me. So his idea of neighbors didn't include that kind of a Greek woman. And she showed it to him and he said, oh my God, you're right, ha, I, I, I got caught. So in any case, this love thy neighbor stuff is always good if it's the people you grew up with and you're familiar with, but how about someone else? Yeah, they could interpret it that way. But yeah. Another no, she, person might take a look at that Syrophoenician no, no, she, story and say, hey, okay. look, Jesus showed the ability to learn from someone he doesn't consider his neighbor. On the contrary. St. Thomas Aquinas, his great Summa Theologica, was <coughs> the guiding force for Catholic scholarship, included Pseudo Dionysius's quote 1,700 times. What do you think that did when someone came along and said, you know what, that's uh, based on a forgery? What do you think that did to the people involved in the identity between Christianity and reason as introduced by Pseudo Dionysius? Do they still hold Paul, I mean, to St. Thomas Aquinas in the same way? I guess not. No. Oh, among minors, among the intellectuals? My, minors? 
what effect do you think that would have? Would you think the primary effect it would have would be on church leaders and Catholic intellectuals to discover that St. Thomas Aquinas' great work turns out to be based upon a, a heretic disguised as a Christian? If he quotes the dude 1,700 times in his writings, that's more than they quote me. Well, I imagine if it benefits church leaders to reject St. Thomas Aquinas, that they'll reject him for their own selfish purposes. Oh, okay. See, what is the Renaissance? Does the Renaissance presuppose a historical condition can continue a certain mode of thinking? That's a, it's a curious problem. Like, uh, the problem, in, the problem in, at that period of time was that a new group of people came in and they studied Greek and Latin. Now they were the Hmong, the educated, a new class of people. There's a problem. What are they going to do with their learning? It turns out there was only one place they could go, and that was to the uh, royalty throughout Europe as secretaries. Hmm. Therefore, they joined the opposition, as it were. They didn't join a rational movement developing in society. They become hirelings. That's Machiavelli and the prince. He turned his intellect to defend the, the powers of royalty. This went on as a a modus operandi for the people who learned Greek and learned all of this learning. There was no place for them in society. So the only place open at employment, you know, they used to have these employment agencies in those days, 30% they get back. <laughs> that was the only employment. I'm thinking that maybe what we need to do is a... So like the all must there be a historical foundation for a new kind of wisdom to enter into society? Otherwise, it will suffer the same fate that what happened in Europe. In Europe? Like, would you agree you know some people around here who studied that Greek stuff? Yep. Really? Uh, are they offered all kinds of employment? That's not, they're not? Nope. Could it be a handicap? Yep. That's the problem of the Renaissance, right there. All of these people came in, new people, study Greek and get ahead. They gained their, the only place they could gain employment was from the kings and queens of Europe as secretaries and other agencies, yeah. Same thing in our country, it looks like. Yeah. Rhonda, do you know anyone who studied Greek and might not be able to get a position of high dignity and power and money? Oh, um, <laughs> but no. they would like to turn it down. <laughs> they wouldn't mind the dignity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hang with you guys, just ask. I'm thinking you couldn't pay me to hang with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it, it seems to go back to Brad's idea. It's going to well, all like, be flattened. Yeah, let, me, let me tell a funny story that uh, occurs to me. Um, when I was in, doing motivation research, uh, oh yeah, okay, this is good. And uh, I'm trying to think of the, the, the name of the firm. It was the, only, the two, two major in, uh, advertising agencies in the United States. Uh, good, it starts with Goodman. Goodman. Ah. Anyhow. I'd given my report on something I was doing, I was walking out, and they said, Pierre, we'd like you to come in here and take a look at this, if you don't mind. I, f I figured, oh, here comes a freebie. <laughs> and I was brought into this room, oak table, you know, 
beautifully polished, and about 30 guys just all around with coffee, putting their feet up on the table, you know. It turned out that these 30 were experts in linguistics, communication, psychology. All of them had PhDs. I figured, what the hell is going on? This is, uh, OK. As we'd like to show you something. I said, OK. Only take a couple of minutes. I said, OK. And they projected on the film, on the board, a hunt food commercial. Hunt food ketchup. Ketchup. Big time. And the music went, and the graphics came, and you saw the ketchup bottle going. Beautifully done. No more than 18, <coughs> eight, 18 right. seconds. And all of these guys are masters, see? This is what they're doing with their vast knowledge. There's no place for these guys to use all of their studies for anything worthwhile. All of them are sitting around, and they have to make a judgment, and they're caught. They don't know how to solve this problem, and I'm called in, see. So I said, well, what's the issue? And the guy says, well, um, our client, of course, is hunt foods, and the music that accompanies this commercial <coughs> is, has been composed one of the leading composers. And the problem is they've made 10,000 copies of this song that's now going to be distributed to all of these people, and it's going to, they have a way of putting it in here and there and trying to make it a best, one of the top 10 musical pieces. So I'm sitting here, I'm saying, what the hell is the problem? So the guy says, well, the problem is uh, the ketchup coming out of the bottle goes, and it's not in the musical score. I said, interesting. I said, what do you guys do with it? Everyone had a theory. <laughs> <laughs> they all had theories. <laughs> so they said, well, we're wondering whether or not uh, we can agree on releasing this, and then with all of the money to placed already around so that this could be possibly become among the top ten, and then it would be naturally linked in everybody's mind with Hunt Foods and ketchup, and therefore there would be a, a double bang that have free publicity based upon this great music produced by this great genius. But he didn't include and had no place for the <laughs> This was their problem. About 30 of these guys, all PhDs, this, all of this learning it's the same thing as Greek scholarship. I, we have all of this great learning all over the place, and no one can put it to any meaningful purpose because we don't tolerate meaning in a commercial society run by capitalists. Everybody has to work for some corporation, and that ain't interest, and it has no meaningful relationship to the realm of the mind. Right. So, anyhow, I'll tell you, finish the story. I said, yeah, well, uh, it's going to be a flop because that gave it the beat that everybody's going to be finding and they're looking for in the music and it's not there. They said, goodbye. I said, okay, I left. I didn't get a dime for it, by the way. It was a freebie. But it was true. It turned out to be a flop yeah. without the... It gave it a beat the music didn't have. Why do you think it needed that kind of thing? Yeah, but see, the moral of the story is we've developed all kinds of people with great insight into a variety of subjects, and here I'm sitting around 
the 30 of these guys? What are they sweating over? An 18 second commercial. <coughs> it's the same thing. But they're pondering. That's the use of their mind. Yeah, they're all pondering <laughs> the stupid 18 second commercial. But they're not upset. <laughs> but they're not upset. They're not at war with one another. <laughs> I don't know about that. They may have undercut one another in yeah, many ways. You know, I was thinking that going back to the issue of, of, of um, radicalization, I, I did work in the, in the youth authority, and when these kids, we had to do groups, and there were always some kids, a, half, a, a dozen of them or so, and there was one in particular we'd have a group and we'd go so far and he immediately started arguing, disagreeing, throwing tantrums. And so one day I just let him leave the group. Well, he couldn't go very far with it. So I said, okay, well, can, you know, can we take over? And as long as he was in power, he was fine with anything. But as soon as I said, well, we need to finish this group, we need, you know, we need to finish this point, nope, he throws tantrums. And the only way we could deal with him was to remove him from his group and just have him deal with himself individually and let him just complain all he wanted until he figured out that whatever he needed to get out, he, he could get out. He couldn't do it in a group. How could you apply that to your father? Well, I could have asked my dad and moved him aside, but and were, asked him the same questions. He you had a, a something at stake with his girlfriend. That's step one. But I wasn't in a place to deal with my father. Oh, you know? that's, hey, you're now. It's uh, come on. The time is. But weren't you making a point about radicalization? Yeah, I was. I was thinking that um, that these. That if we understood the gang thinking or the thinking of what basically what he was doing was undermining anything that was rational in the group. That was what he was doing. He was functioning to undermine everything rational. Similar it, to? Similar to my dad, similar yeah. to the gang, similar yeah. to the radicalization. Yeah. So what is it that you're asking, what question can we come up with? What, how can we best deal with it? And mm. it brought to mind a, a, a news broadcast where uh, I guess an ex-CIA or retired FBI agent said that it is, it's on the mind of a gang level thinking. We need, that these people, we need to go in and find out what it is that their problems are. They're, they're thinking like gangs. They are killing each other. Sure, sure. You're and offering if we find out that their problem is Who's going to go in and... Who's going, who's going to accept that and tackle that? And yeah, that's true. No, so you, you, you had a solution for that kid. We were wondering yeah. how that no. could be oh. generalized. Oh, I see. Um, like you well, put him... You put him as... Come on, do it we again. Put, we, had, we had to see that we needed to address him. We couldn't, we couldn't okay. just fight him because he was a fighter yeah, yeah, and yeah. he just continually so escalated. What, yeah, go back to the solution. We pulled him aside and we actually talked to him individually. We did. We took him away from groups. Pardon me. You, I thought you said that you put him in a situation where he would then have to act on a, on his own, making certain decisions. Did you not? Oh, you mean in the group? Yeah. We tried that, but it didn't last very long. Um, yeah, we let. I no, let no, you refer, no, no, no. I think he's referring to when you said you had to take him, make him deal with himself yeah. individually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what we had to do. Yeah, but, but we're and wondering talk. how you might be able to use that uh. as a principle uh, to apply to mankind, as it were. You found a, you found a solution. Well, in terms of the the radical people, yeah. these people that are super radical, I think we need to talk. I need. I think we need to have some avenue <coughs> where they can just blast everything out as much as they can. You did have such a great example. Oh, that oh I'm sorry. What did I, I miss? Reminded you of. Green analogy. Well, 
I thought that it would be to pull them to pull them aside and let them talk, uh, you know, let them come out and talk about what it is and how they can to, to be reflected in. Or let them talk. I don't, I don't know. Uh, what here, did I, don't, I say? I missed it. I don't know if it was a great example because if he's only able to deal with himself when he's set aside into can you ever be brought back into the group and then function with the group because isn't that what we're wondering how we can yes. make radicals unradical yes. and be able to live in society in peace with each other quite true well, well stated actually um, that would have taken a different taken time but yes I do think eventually he but he wasn't in a place until whatever was he needed to deal with. In the middle of that group going back and forth, maybe individuals. Uh, back and forth. No, I don't know whether that's possible. But I do know that in the process he did calm down a lot. He did eventually. Um, what would you say did it? So that's the issue. I think giving him some some kind of. Uh, arena to to explode whatever he wanted to explode without an audience and be able to you know be questioned about it so that's the issue is is that any different than the, the issue of Achilles He's a right, a, a tyrant, as it were, dogmatic, mm -hmm. willing to see his fellow men for nine years being destroyed in a battle while he keeps his most highly trained troop in reserve for nine years and allows the battle to go on without his participation and with his troops. Feels self-confident, knows what he's doing, he's a tyrant. What brought about the change? That major change. He had to see his whole life in a new way. Wasn't it that he lost Patroclus? Yeah. Yeah, he lost Yeah, I got to do something. What do you mean in the uh, the retrieving of Hector's corpse? Oh, poor you. We're still having problems diagnosing the, the problem, though, I think, because, like, I, I don't know, someone over here, I think it might have been you, Bill, said something about economic impoverishment driving this radicalization, but these guys in San Bernardino, the guy in San Bernardino was making 70000 a year, had a good job. That's not the kind of people I'm talking about, it's the people that, who actually join ISIS in those countries. Yeah, well. They're in trouble. They're Sorry. And not I think we need we're to, not offering them any to talk to them. What yeah, is it that's driving them? We're not offering them any alternative. We're not offering them something <coughs> <coughs> We're just offering 
just think of them as a war adversary, and they don't realize it's an ideological problem, but they're running into an economic problem as well. They're just, they're, they're nothing. There's no hope for them. So they never do that. How can you have a, a, a person be a suicide bomber without having no hope? I mean, the only hope they have is something else that will happen to them, I suppose. I know, but that's, that's what I'm saying is even if they have something else, they can still radicalize. You have to examine those people compared to the people here who go there and join them, so to speak. I think they're two different types of people. I do. I think that so you're thinking if we give them jobs, if we give them an alternative vi alternate vision, we could help them that way? I think so. Yeah. Well, I think that's a simplistic way, yeah. one of the ways. Well, I mean, simplistic, it's a good start. It's but it doesn't change their jobs. ideology for some reason. No, it doesn't. Well, what was my reaction when I, I'm faced with death? I want to grab the Parmenides. <laughs> I'm going, okay, you think that's you what I'm going to go out with. <laughs> and I'm going, what are, the, what are these other people? What do they want to, I mean, they have no meaning. Their meaning in their life is they're willing to give up their kids and their ideology is to go and gain meaning by taking over land. Suicide vests. Blowing themselves up and going to Allah. <coughs> I don't really know. I don't know. I have no idea. What are your two jobs? I'm a tutor and substitute teacher. Oh. No idea. I knew about the substitute teaching. I couldn't figure out what else you put in. There. Yeah, it just it just started up recently again. For a tutor in the center? No, it's distance tutoring. We I go to kids' houses. Mm. Or people who are sick or can't get to school? No, no, it's uh, the, the, it's with the No Child Left Behind program, and they um, they provide free tutoring for um, people who are behind. No, no, kids who qualify for free or reduced lunch. Really? Oh, we became friends. I know, but it's very cool. Yeah, it's fun. Just yeah, doesn't pay that much. Yes, <laughs> <coughs> So they figure people who can't pay for their lunch are people who need tutoring. Yeah, they're, they're, my, they're the ones left behind. We don't want to leave them behind, yeah. Well, usually they'll leave them behind is academic and not nurture. Yeah, I wonder about that. Yeah, it's like more money in your pocket is more money in your pocket. You, you know, there is a, a process by which the districts uh, uh, give approval to continue tutoring based upon a pretest. I actually think yeah. it's a good idea. often do go together. Um, you know, people can't afford, kids come to school without breakfast, kids who come to school with no lunch, you know. Yeah. So then they don't, they, they don't have the wherewithal. Can you imagine being a grown kid and not having a home in your belly? You have to work, you know, take a test and do all sorts of stuff until lunch? But you used to have both free breakfast and free lunch. I don't know if we've gone back to that now, but for a while they cut it out and didn't allow free breakfast. Whoever's coffee is, David, you're, the doggy got your coffee. Uh, the doggy is munching the away. <laughs> Sorry. Caffeinated, caffeinated dog. He likes the coffee. He likes the coffee. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, his snout was fully in that cup, so. <laughs> the away. And watch the cup. No, you don't want to get that with yeah, kids here. The, the jumps that don't It looks like he wants to drink some of it right now. I don't care about that. Doc-itis. I'm thinking that maybe yeah. we, we could change the name instead of this uh, a renaissance uh, because if we associate it with Greek, that's still part of the civilized world. Maybe we should call it a rash, rash start a new church called Rational Religion. <laughs> Yeah. That way they'll go along with it, but then we can sneak in some rationality <laughs> and, and bring in all these rational people that were in history, even their groups and stuff. And just, okay, you're going to participate in what? And, but it's religion, so they can't really walk away. <laughs> Bomb it. Yeah. They have to blow.
play with it for a while. That's the total of the center. Yeah, no, we're cold still. Huh? We know we're cold still. We know we're cold eventually end up. Cold? Colts. That's a great cult that you're suggesting. I have to get memory. Oh, cults. Cults. But I know at the end of it where it's going, because once they wake up and see that they woke up to be rational, there's only one way out. Oh, what's that? They have to die. No, either themselves or someone else. Yes, but maybe there'd be a good kind of like uh, group, you know, well, if, if it was a group and if it's like fitting into that Fetzinger's idea where in the group, the more people who know about the content, the more likely that you're going to agree with the content of the group. Yes. So in that sense, they could be trapped, they and they can. have to then Bye, Nancy. become rational. Bye -bye. In, in a religion, trapped in a religion. Well, do you, so we just use the title. At some point, they're going to have to face either continuing with the religion and becoming rational, which is your end step, or saying, whoa, or what that end step mean? is to become something other than I'm willing to go, and then we see these mass deaths in cults over and over. Or you'd have to question what the religion means. What would religion mean in this rational form? Yes, they would have to either wake up or die. There really is no other option. No, that's not okay. That's fine. I just <laughs> haven't seen so many cults where the end result is waking up. No, no, the, the, the occults are that if you don't agree with the, with the way they follow it, but if they're rational, then they don't have to. That would be nice. It's okay. See ya. That's being right. So the, the chaff, the ones who fall out, are the ones that make better, better. That's great. Then they can, yeah. You don't want to participate? It's okay. The only tithing that we have is that you function rationally. We don't have to make that change. <laughs> no money. That's the principle. I don't know. Anyway. The Academy had a fairly good thing going, honestly. For a long time, before they got kicked out. The what? The Academy for Rock. Our Academy. Well, oh, you're, you're talking about Plato's Academy. Platonic Academy, sure. They, they had a real good thing going, and that was part of it. One handed over all of their money when they walked in the door. But there would be, if they yeah. left, okay. they would have their dividend at the end. Huh. So not too much risk there. No money is attached to it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. The Pyth did you know that the Pythagoreans were a ruling philosophical community? Not only were a philosophical community, they ruled the surrounding countryside. That would be the way to go. And they ended up getting firebombed and hacked to death by a revolution. Well, eventually. Eventually, that is the end game. Prayer. You better touch up on your. <laughs> yeah.